Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at um, comparative advantage and the benefits of trade. All this information is in your book in Chapter 2 uh, on the pages listed there. Um, and the, the goal here is to understand the difference between comparative and absolute advantage and to get a sense for uh, what's called the production possibilities curve or production possibilities frontier. So when we talk about economics, we recognize that the, the eternal issue or question here is one of scarcity that we have unlimited wants but limited resources. So we can't have everything that we want. In order to have more of one thing, we typically have to have less of the other. And so uh, we can see if in this world where there's just army trucks and cars, if I want to go from point A to point B, uh, I'm going from no cars and 12 trucks to one car, but that means I have to give up some trucks. And so when I go from zero to one car, I go from 12 to 10 trucks. And so we say that the opportunity cost of one car would be two trucks. It's this idea that in order to have one, I have to give up something else. And so that if I was going to go from point B to C, then I would say the opportunity cost of an additional car, of going from one car to two cars, is going to be equal to four trucks. Because I'm going to go from 10 to 6. And so we recognize that we can't have um, as many trucks as we want and as many cars as we want. And so we have to make these, these hard decisions. And so that's where trade comes in because we can't produce everything we want. Um, and so we have to rely on what's uh, most efficient for us and then trade with other people to get additional items that we may not be able to produce. And so that's what trade is all about. So when we look at trade, we're looking at two different concepts. One is what we call the absolute advantage, and that means that I can make more of something than somebody else. And so in the case of the United States, we have the absolute advantage in the manufacturer, basically every good uh, against virtually every country. We can just make more of everything because we have more resources. Um, but that doesn't mean that we should make everything because we're not as efficient at some things as some of our trading partners, partners are. And so that brings into... Um, the conversation this idea of comparative advantage who can produce goods at a lower opportunity cost because the people who can do it at a low, lower opportunity cost and are more efficient should be those that are tasked with producing certain goods and then um, countries that with a comparative advantage and other goods should make those and then we should trade because by doing that we can actually maximize or increase the the number of goods that we're able to consume in order to um, clarify this point, we're going to take a look at an example, and we're going to look at uh, England and the United States, and we're going to pretend that there are exactly two goods between the two of them, fish and chips, or French fries, if you prefer. And uh, when we look at this, we see that um, England produces less of both of these goods than the United States. And so the U.S. has an absolute advantage in the production of fish, because the U.S. could produce 100, whereas England's best could be 80. And the U.S. has an absolute advantage in chips because if they focus all of their efforts on producing uh, chips, they can make 50 and England can only make 20. So one might look at that and say the U.S. should make both because they can do better at both and then why trade with England? But that leaves, leaves out this idea of comparative advantage and relative efficiency. So let's take a look at that for a second. If we're looking at the opportunity cost to England of producing fish, the way it's expressed is in terms of what I'm giving up. And so the opportunity cost for England of producing fish is how many chips per fish they lose. And so we would say that um, England's opportunity cost is 20 chips per 80 fish. Because we've got this um, linear production curve, um, we just take the, the two extreme points and divide. So we would say that England is giving up 20 chips per 80 fish, which means that they are giving up one quarter chip per fish. Once we have that opportunity cost for England, then figuring out the opportunity cost of chips for England is really easy. We just take the inverse of it, or the reciprocal. So um, in the case of England, how many uh, fish per chip are they giving up? Well, if they're going to produce chips, they're going to give up 80 fish per 20 chips. So the opportunity cost for England is four fish per chip. In the United States, we can look at that and say the opportunity cost of fish is how many chips per fish they're losing. So they're losing 50 over 100. So the U.S. is losing one half chip per fish, which means then that they're losing two fish per chip. 
if they focus on making chips. So now we have enough information. We can identify who is relatively more efficient at producing both of these goods, and that will help inform us on what the, um, the, the proper good for each country to focus on should be. When you're determining uh, comparative advantage, what you're, what you're looking at here is opportunity costs, and an opportunity cost is essentially a price. And so what we're looking for is who can um, produce a good at a lower, a lower price, who has, has to pay the lowest price, who gives up the least amount of the other good in order to produce um, this one. And so when we look at fish, for example, um, the United States gives up a half a chip, England gives up a quarter of a chip. So the cost to England of producing fish is much lower than it is for the United States. It's half as much for, the, for England as it is for the United States. So England should focus on producing fish because they can do it for cheaper. The United States gives up fewer fish when it produces chips. The price uh, for the United States of producing chips is lower because their opportunity cost is lower. And so the United States should focus on producing chips. So when we're talking about um, absolute advantage. The U.S. has an absolute advantage in both, but England is relatively better off um, making fish and the United States is relatively better off in making chips. It is always the case that when one trading partner has a comparative advantage in one good, their partner has the comparative advantage in the other. So you can always have, you can have absolute advantage in both goods, but you can never have comparative advantage in both goods. So why do we trade? If we look at it this way, we could say that without trade, the U.S. could have 20 fish just as, a, as an option um, on the production curve. And England could have 20 fish and 15 chips. The U.S. could have 50 fish and 25 chips. That's a, that is a potential outcome for both of those uh, countries. And so we would see 70 total fish and 40 chips consumed between the two of them. However, with trade, if England focuses only on producing what it has a comparative advantage in, that is if it only produces fish and produces no chips and relies on the United States to produce all of the chips for both countries, then what's possible is a consumption of 80 fish and 50 chips between the two countries. And so with trade, it's possible, it's not the only outcome, but it's possible that England could choose to consume 25 fish and 20 chips and the U.S. could consume 55 fish and 30 chips which would match the total maximum production available. And in that case, you can see that both countries have maximized um, and increased, actually increased the amount of each good that they can consume as a result of trade. England is being able, is able to consume five more fish and five more chips, and so can the United States, because they decided to focus on this trade, which is why countries decide to, um, to engage in international trade and open up their economies, because it increases the amount of goods that they can consume. We're going to do some more work on uh, comparative and absolute advantage when you get into class. Work on some problems, and I'll see you then.